I grew up in a really healthy diet of science fiction. Doctor Who was on the television every afternoon. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was my all-time favourite book. And Back to the Future were my favourite movies. Which all got me thinking. If I had a time machine and I could go back in time and talk to myself and give myself one lesson, what would that be? And I've realised as I've thought more about it, I've realised it wouldn't be some moment in time that I would change or some financial advantage that I'd try and give myself. Instead, it would be something completely intangible. I would want to tell myself about how a way of thinking can change your life. If I could send three words back in time, it would be always think positively. Four words, the mind is everything. Five words, what you think, you become. Those last two are actually from Buddha. So what I'd really want to impress upon my 15-year-old self would be the importance of visualising your self-image in a positive way and how this will inevitably shape your life. That who you see yourself as is who you will become. That concept, that way of thinking has shaped my life and significantly how I operate as a teacher. I see myself as not necessarily the imparter of knowledge or the bringer of wisdom, but more as the builder of self-confidence, of self-belief. You see, self-image is a double-edged sword. If you believe in yourself, if you're confident in your abilities, this will more often than not lead yourself to strive to do something because you believe you can do it. You'll see yourself as being successful. And as my dad always says, success breeds success. However, if you see yourself as someone who is mediocre, someone who has nothing important to say, something who has nothing to contribute, someone who sees themselves lost amongst the sea of faces, or worse, you see yourself as a class clown, or someone who just can't learn math, then not only will you shy away from what you believe you'll fail at, but you'll seek reinforcement that you are that class clown, that you, ex will ex that you need to accept those failures in math, and that that's all you'll ever achieve. Now, look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that if you believe hard enough or think hard enough that you're going to be able to fly or dodge bullets or any of that matrix sort of stuff. But, well, let me tell you a story. I remember really clearly a situation. I was in a music classroom, grade five, and a new girl had just arrived, and she was dazzling. She could do everything and do it brilliantly. She swam like a mermaid, she ran like a gazelle, was cleverer than Einstein, and played the piano like Beethoven. At this stage, I'd been learning the piano for many years, but she came along and played pieces of music that were just at a whole other level above what I could do. I remember even clearly the piece of music that day. It was called Clowns by Dmitry Kabalevsky. I watched, I listened in awe, and eventually I mustered up the courage to go and talk to her, and I asked something like, how do you do that? Your fingers are just so fast. And she responded with something like, I don't know, I don't really think about it, I just do it. Now I know what she really meant was, I practiced a lot and now my fingers just know what to do, but I was determined to play like her. Her name was Lindsay and she's one of those moments in time that forever changed my life. She showed me that it could be done, that it was possible, so I had to start believing I could do it too. So I practiced, and practiced, and practiced, and eventually we would duel to that piece of music. We would challenge each other to see who could play it the fastest with no mistakes. I remember being devastated that Lindsay moved town again when we went to high school. 
But from that experience, self-belief grew. Music ended up becoming a huge part of my life, and a piano is now my comfort. I'll often seek out a piano and just play whatever comes to my fingers. I now believe that I can play whatever is inside me, and it is such an empowering feeling. I believed I could do it, and now I can. What I thought, I became. Oddly though, and very frustratingly looking back, I really didn't learn that lesson though that Lindsay was trying to teach me all those years ago. At least not at that point in my life. Boy, I wish I could go back and tell myself to pay attention. Now it took me some more lessons from the school of life before I really learned this true power of the mind. Tennis was the other large part of my childhood growing up. And I remember a particular tournament I also remember it being a particularly crushing loss. I remember the court I played on, I remember my opponent, I remember the shirt I was wearing, the racket in my hand, the sweat on my palms and fingers. And I remember not expecting to win as I stepped out onto the tennis court. But then, before I knew it, I was up a set and a break and had two more games to get and I was going to win the match. But then I remember an inner voice inside me saying, wow. You're winning. What is going on here? Doubt crept in. Disbelief, even. And before I knew it, I walked off that tennis court having talked myself out of the match through doubt and negative self-talk. That loss cemented the doubt in my ability, particularly in my backhand for years to come. In my mind, the doubt was justified. I just couldn't hit my backhand the same as my forehand. At that point, I didn't realise how important it was to be talking positively to myself. I wasn't yet saying to myself, always think positively, or what you think you become. It wasn't until many years later, well after I'd left school, that tennis was once again a big part of my life. That lesson finally came back to teach me what it was I needed to know. To pay my way through teacher's college, I took up tennis coaching and got my coaching qualifications. And I remember being appointed as a team coach for a state-level carnival. I remember sitting on the side of the court with my young team, much like they do in Davis Cup. They were young kids, only 10 years old, but with talent that was jaw-dropping. Sometimes they'd come off the court, they'd just drop their serve, and they were almost inconsolable. But there was nothing I could do in those few minutes before the next game. On their technique, I couldn't improve that, not in that time. And there was no way of miraculously improving their, improving their stamina. Instead, all I could do was speak to them about their mental game. Because that is something that we all have control over all of the time. How we speak to ourselves in our own heads. And I found myself saying, don't focus on that last game. Focus on the next point, and only that next point. Relax yourself. Let go of that frustration. OK, now, pitch yourself instead, stepping forward. Meet that ball early as that serve comes through. Can you picture that in your head? OK, good, let's go. In that moment, I was channeling Buddha. What you think, you become. I recently read a great interview with Ash Barty. Uh, she's a multi-talented Australian athlete and sportswoman, world, uh, Wimbledon champion and world number one tennis player. She spoke about the crucial role that her mentor Ben Crow had on her success and specifically his guidance on how important it is to be compassionate towards yourself and the way that you think and see yourself as. It was enlightening and said succinctly in that one interview everything I wish I could have told those 10 year olds as I sat there with my squad all those years ago. So I look back now at my experiences with music, with sport, particularly tennis, and remember time and time again being told, think positive. It's such a cliche that I think its true meaning and potential can be lost. But what's very interesting to note here is that it's not just the teaching of Buddha that gives weight to this power of positive thinking. Martin Seligman 
in his well-known studies into positive psychology showed that positive thinking has a significant impact on people's ability to overcome adversity, to fight depression, and to promote achievement. And research by Sheldon Cohen and his colleagues from uh, Carnegie Mellon have even found that people who report high levels of positive emotions and positive outlooks will be less likely to get sick when exposed to a virus compared to those who have more negative outlooks and lower levels of positive emotions. And studies by Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist from Stanford, have looked specifically at the impacts of the dopamine and serotonin systems further highlighting the science by how think, by, behind how thinking positively actually affects the brain and therefore how you respond to different situations. So the science is in and it's pretty overwhelming. But yes, sadly I'm not a teenager anymore as my two teenage children will tell you. I call out to them and say, have you seen my glasses? And they're on your head, Dad, they'll say. And all the positive thinking in the world isn't helping my sore knees or back as I come off the tennis court these days. All the positive thinking is not doing me any good, but I do wish then or now that I could have learned the lessons of positive thinking and positive self-talk back when I was 15 years old. So instead, I try and pass these lessons on to the students in my class, knowing just how difficult it is for them to think this way than it was even for me. Because I say this knowing how particularly difficult it is with the negative influence that social media can have on how people have a positive self-image. The pressure must be enormous. I am very glad I'm not a teenager of today. And unfortunately, I know I don't have a TARDIS or a DeLorean, so I know I can't go back and tell my 15-year-old self this positive message of, power, of the power of positive thinking. So I guess I'm stuck here instead having to try and pass on this message to my own two teenage children. So here we go. Xavier, Charlotte, how you speak to yourself changes everything. So speak kindly and positively to yourself envisaging your success, always think positively, telling yourself that you can, not that you can't. Remember, Buddha and Dad said, the mind is everything, what you think you become. Thank you.